Popular back pain. Okay, it's a well known. It's a well known problem. And my guest today, Gabriel Rutten, MD, from Holland. Say hello, Gabriel. Hello, everybody. Okay, Gabriel and I. This is now two thousand late two thousand twenty one. We have authored a book, co-authored a book. Gabriel's written most of it, but it's got both our names on it. Um, called Official EFT from A to Z. B stands for back pain, among other things. <laughs> so back pain is going to be our focus today, right? Yes, let's do that. All right. Now, we talked a little bit. Uh, oh, by the way, the English version, I mean, the, the, the Dutch version is, is going to be available in late 2021. The English version should be available. The English translation should be available some sometime in early 2022. Now, to get to back pain, Gabriel and I were talking just a bit before we started recording all of this. Um, there's an interesting phenomenon goes on, for, and this may be quite useful for those of you who have back pain or those of you who who are therapists helping others. And that is, this is very strange, but our, our radiologists, our doctors who specialize in x-rays and MRIs and things like that, can look at the back, take a picture of the inner workings of the back, and they can look at it and they can say, look, here's a problem. This is out of alignment there, and this is too, this is too squashed down, and that's too big, and <laughs> all that other stuff. And they can say, oh, this person should have a big-time back pain. Other times they'll look at it and say, oh, this person, perfect. No back pain here. But, Gabrielle, that's not really the truth, is it? No, 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 indeed not. So there's absolutely no relationship between findings on an X-ray or an MRI and whether you have um, problems or not. Interesting, yeah, huh? that, that seems so strange because, well, an MRI costs a lot of money, for example, okay? And so here's this big, huge piece of equipment uh, that take this X-ray and see all this stuff. And we've got doctors that have all this training that can tell you mechanically what's wrong with your back, and yet... Someone, some of those people, many of them, have no back pain whatsoever. Before you talk, I just want to mention uh, one, of, one of our mutual friends, Sherry Baker, who appears with me a lot, she's one of our directors and so on. According to MRI, she has a miserable back. Mm -hmm. she, should be, she should be in pain walking with a cane, you know, and, and all of this. No problem at all. Perfect flexibility and all of that. So, Gabrielle, how do we explain that? Well, <clears throat> I'd like to just use this as evidence, again, that it is mind over matter, in the sense that, yes, your body has certain characteristics, you can find stuff in your body, but um, these types of, of imagery doesn't help you, really, to find out what's, what's wrong. And so, you know... I'm presuming the people that watch these videos are interested in using EFT to look for problems. And we say with EFT, look for emotional causes because they will show up in your body. And I think this is a very good example that um, the emotional cause shows up in your body and how the, your, your back looks on an x-ray isn't very interesting at all. Yeah, but on the other hand... On the other hand, the doctor can say, well, yeah, but your L5-S1 disc is really too small and you should be having sciatica and all kinds of problems. Yeah, so, no. So, I'm, so having been a doctor, because you always say I'm MD, but I am formally MD, we should, you know, probably say, or in, in Holland, I need to say I'm an MD not practicing. Anyways, long story short, um, I think what, the, what people don't realize is that there's many, many, many more people that have all kinds of stuff that you that would show up on an x-ray, but, you know, there's never an x-ray done. So you never find out. And so what I, what I believe is that doctors tend to overestimate what they find either in a, uh, you know, in lab tests or imagery 
that that would be the explanation of what is wrong or why uh, or it should be the cause of you know pain or other problems in the body because you know the whole the test is not complete so to speak if you if you were to prove that whatever you see on an x-ray uh, is the cause of the problem you would need to test everybody and then and you know and then see what happens and so they tend to over overestimate uh, their findings all right is one so, part of the deal all right so so we're finding that the x-ray the mri not all that accurate it may be useful here and there or something to point to some stuff perhaps so what does cause back pain and what's the solution ah magic question <laughs> good question good question so here's the thing here's the thing if you look at your body there's some you know bigger groups that sort of react to certain types of emotional issues back bone muscle and tendon but also the other bones in your body the other tendons um, tend to react to self-worth issues a low self-esteem i'm not good enough i'm not lovable i'm uh, worthless something's wrong with me i'm defective something's wrong with me so those types of emotional issues tend to show up in your body you're fearful you're you're afraid you're not good enough you have fears of not being good enough in that sense you're not strong because you do react to anything somebody you know anybody says any rejection ah you're you know big problem um, any criticism ah big problem somebody says something big problem you'll feel fear other negative emotions and so you're not strong enough to sort of relaxed and peacefully accept that you are who you are and what you are and it's all get all good there's nothing wrong with you ever sure you make mistakes some things don't look good fine but you in essence you're perfect even, and even so though, even though you can't run as fast as somebody else or you're not mm -hmm. as big and tall or strong as somebody else you're not as rich as somebody else you're yeah. not as well connected as somebody else those are all just you know circumstances Th that's not really important you your essence that uh, that what makes you you is perfect you were created perfect you'll leave this realm in a you know you're always perfect so if you're not strong enough to be good enough to be part of this society if you look at animals that sort of explains it a little easier if you're part of the herd but you are not fast enough not big enough or there's something you can't do but the other and the others can do um you'll have fear in a sense fear because you're not good enough you can't be a good member of the herd and so this is what if you look at the biological reaction the body does it makes you temporarily a little weaker when this i'm not good enough um stress is going on so that you're forced to slow down and solve whatever you're not good at because at the end after the, the body starts healing again bones muscles and tendons will be a lot stronger than they were were before so would it, be, would it be fair to say i'm sorry that they these things can regenerate oh absolutely okay let me let me just i want to interject something here if i may in, in other videos i've said this but i want to say it here i was told in the 1970s because i was having sciatica that my l5 s1 disc if it was should have been a 10 in size it was now a seven it would someday be a three or a two i would beg for an operation uh, i was told that and i bought it i bought the white coat he was a friend of mine orthopedic surgeon and so on okay. time went on i had my spiritual experience which was indicated in my own book the unseen therapist okay i began doing other emotional work the personal peace procedure and so on but i never once aimed at that L5-S1 disc. I was told it would never regenerate. I bought it, okay? 
so mm -hmm. I didn't bother to regenerate it. But gradually, my uh, back issues started to fade. I began jogging again, you know. Uh, uh, at the time in the 70s, I was in my 30s. Uh, I'm, now, I'm now 81. I have no back pain whatsoever. I had my, I had my back, my L5S1 disc, uh, x-rayed how long ago? Six years ago, maybe something like that. And it was an eight or nine. It had actually regenerated, regenerated. Yes. So I only interject that because we are, we are told, I think, by the medical profession or conventional means, maybe I'll be broader than that, that you cannot regenerate these things. But I see evidence otherwise. So comment on that and then let's go on. Yes, yes, yes. No, because that's complete nonsense. Your body continually breaks down cells and builds up cells, even nerve tissue. And when I was still in medical school, which I wasn't in the 70s because I was still a teenager back then, but, you know, soon after I was in medical school, they also taught me that, and others, obviously, that, you know, all kinds of tissues do not uh, regenerate, but they do. There's a constant regeneration of your body. In actual fact, in about seven years, every single cell in your body has been replaced by a new one. Mm -hmm. So uh, regeneration is certainly uh, in order. However, you need to um, solve your emotional underlying issues. Now, I'm assuming that um, you resolved maybe unconsciously some of your underlying issues oh 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 gabriel then. gabriel let me i i i changed a, a lot of them but, you know, when i was having my back pain i was this hard driving businessman you've got to you know be successful you've got to conquer the world you've got to have three houses and and whatever it is and, and all of this you know and i was getting stomach problems and everything else as a result and once i had my spiritual experience and began aiming at my specific events and other things, not necessarily aiming at my back, but just my general, I need yes. more peace in my system. The stomach problems went away, the back problems went away, physical things start to fade. And that's what we're talking about here, I think. So please go ahead. Absolutely, absolutely. So you were very lucky to uh, discover all this, you know, in the sense what is important in life what isn't yeah. and and you know you've done your fair share of eft and you're still doing it so i'm pretty sure uh you have your emotional issues pretty much under control correct yeah yeah well we all have more work to do myself included of yes okay. of course uh, of course but but that that just that leads us back into the idea that it, it isn't the what the x-ray shows it's our emotional, personal peace within that has much more to do with our back pain. Yes, yes. Than we give it credit for. So, please, yeah. more. So, back pain um, often comes from the muscles or the tendons, but it can also uh, come from the, the, the bone and the little membrane around the bone. So, I just want to point out that osteoporosis, bone tissue loss, is also the same issue the same issue and here's the thing that we need to uh, understand in order to to know what what, what do I want to tackle if I want to tackle these kinds of problems usually when you are in stress and the emotional situations are actively happening usually you don't have many uh, problems pains or anything you start noticing once your body starts to regenerate because then, you know, lots of stuff happen and that's when these muscles and tendons tend to be very painful. Not bone itself, that does, you don't feel anything in your bone, but the membrane around it is very painful. So, here's the trick. If you have a back pain, you are already resolving some of the emotional stuff but in order for the back pain to uh, to both uh, go away and stay away you need to look at your emotional problems so here's the trick make a timeline indicate when did this back 
pain start and look for emotional e uh, problems just before the back pain started. So this is essential, and this takes a little getting used to, but you need to look for the emotional self-worth issues before the back pain started. That's when they were ongoing. The moment you feel the pains, you are already healing. Your body is healing. And somehow, you have resolved your emotional issue. Not completely, because if you have you know, chronic back pain or it, it recurs, it means you have similar problems and you haven't resolved them completely. But So look for the emotional issues that were ongoing in your life before the pain really started. Let me, so that's a little trick to, yeah. for the uh, as a pointer. Yeah, to me, there's, there's two little pieces to that. One is, yes, if we can zero in on, oh, gee, the, you know, my parents got divorced, you know, when I was 12 and I never got over it kind of thing. That's when my back pain first started. Okay. That's a big clue. And yes, yes, yes. I've seen many cases where we zero in on whatever emotional issue was occurring at or about that time. But there's also another contributor I've found over time. Sometimes just getting back to self-worth. You've been rejected from day one sometimes by some parents or fathers, mothers, siblings, and what, you know, rejected, rejected, traumatized, and all this kind of stuff. And it's been a whole buildup of lots of things. And we, have, we may have this one thing right about that time. But both can be contributors. So yes. if, you go, if you go to that one item right then, you may get a lot of really good results, but it may not be complete. Yes, because yes. Because there's still more personal peace to be done because of other stuff. Exactly. Okay. And that's all addressable with our specific events, but please go ahead. Yes, so you need an approach that does more than just one thing. So identifying uh, the early childhood stuff where you really felt rejected and not good enough and all that, I'm not lovable. All those situations are definitely should be on a list and you should work on them with your personal peace procedure. Um, also, start with triggers more present day triggers because if you have re have had recent you know periods episodes of back aches this whole pattern is still active so the other approach would be to identify more recent triggers from today or yesterday so now we're looking at identifying your worst moment of the day particularly the, those moments in which you feel rejected, in which you feel not good enough, I'm not lovable, etc. So focus on identifying the, uh, the moments where you feel your negative core belief is activated. I'm the not good enough, I'm not lovable. Um, and I'm, when you, you work with your personal peace procedure on them, and when the intensity of all the emotions, and you can feel fear, you can feel anger, you can feel sad, you can feel all kinds of stuff, but you need to identify these types of specific moments um, when the intensity of the negative emotions goes down from you know maximum to around five if zero is nothing and ten is maximum around five you can ask yourself when did I feel like this before which allows you to identify more specific events because what you want to do is clean house on the whole stress pattern and it's you know the foundational stuff is in your early years and could be, you know, you as a babe, a toddler. And most often, because your negative core belief starts in the very early days, you'll need to work on the specific moments where you felt rejected, not good enough, where people were criticizing you and all that. So the foundational stuff is found in the early days. And then later on, because school and first friends and, you know, trainings and first jobs and all that are you know those those are very important periods in your life where again teachers and friends and 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 classmates and all that can um be involved in very specific moments where you feel completely not good enough completely rejected and all that and so you need to clean house until you're you know in the present day and because today your i'm not good enough stress pattern will show up in something that happens today yeah. So, yeah. 
the whole idea, the whole about, idea about not being, not being good enough, good is, enough is, to one degree, to or, one another, degree or another, you know, our culture you know, our gives, culture gives, 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 gives that to it. Gives that to <laughs> television is always, always be better, be better and, and, yes, all of that stuff. and all of that stuff. Now, yes. now, one of the things I was thinking, I was trying to put myself in the shoes of the audience members here. We're yeah. talking about things, which is really a very different approach to what they're thinking about, you know, the x-rays and the MRIs and things about the back pain and, and so on. And it might even seem Oh, that's too much. I could never do that. But that's not really so. This is a this is a different kind of skill, and it takes a little while, yes, to think differently and so. But our course, uh, my book is free. The Unseen Therapist is free. It gives you all the basics right there. Okay, and you can go on to advanced stuff if you want. But it's the kind of thing anybody can learn. And once you've gone through these different thinking doors, you don't think the same way anymore. And what might seem daunting to you now becomes, why didn't I think of that before? Seems so yeah. obvious. Once you've done the personal peace procedure a handful of times, it's, you got it. You know, it's, it's a rather simple yes. little process. And so I just want to make that, make that point. Please continue. Absolutely. Yes, definitely. So don't get discouraged because it's, it, you know, it sounds as if you need to do thousands of specific moments. No. But, you know, if you work with the unseen therapist, um, you tend to, you know, be very, it, it tends to be quite easy to find the right things, especially if you realize I need to look specifically for all these moments where I feel rejected or not good enough. That sort of pinpoints you to, if you want to resolve the back pain, that is, because there's that's probably more stuff. But if you, if you go along and, and follow the ebook and the course, it's, a, it's very doable. So if I may, I would like to add one more thing to how you can approach this. Sure. Which is, um, we call this your negative core belief, which means that's the, the big negative conclusion that we all have. Quite often it's, it's not, it's I'm not good enough, but it could be I'm bad or I'm not lovable or I'm worthless or I shouldn't be here or I don't count. So it's, it's this little, little short, very negative conclusion you have about yourself and you'll know you'll notice you'll recognize it because that pops up a lot of times and so a good way to see whether you've you've you're making progress obviously your your back pain will ease off and stay away the other one would be to to measure how true this statement feels the way to do it is to close your eyes and very mindfully say i'm not good enough as an example and then feel and assess how true does this feel emotionally? So not rationally, but emotionally. And again, score this between 0 and 10. 0 being not true at all, 10 being very true. And you'll notice, if you start working on these issues, the, the, the daily triggers and the foundational stuff, you'll notice that if you measure this negative core belief every once in a while, you'll notice that it'll be more, less and less true. It will feel less and less true. And then you're on your way. Along those lines, Along of that those measuring, lines of that measuring, I do that with I some that frequency. With some frequency. Uh, uh, but I, I tend but to do I it before, before we ever do any unsafe yes. stuff. stuff. We get a zero to ten, and usually it's a nine or a ten or something. Usually, I mean, it's it's up there, okay. And so then we'll do it, we'll do it, and then quite often at the end of it, because we just finished a very specifically oriented, focused unseen therapist session at a specific event, they'll say, "Well, I." You know, I'm not good enough. Uh, well, that's a zero or a one. I don't think much about it. Well, I don't always believe that yet because we're too close to the, the session itself. So we want to look at it tomorrow morning and the next day. And chances are it's going to show up. It may not be the nine or ten, hopefully. It might be a six, a four, an eight, seven or something yes. like some other number. And that's pointing out, oh, there's more to do. And you'd be taught in our courses, you know, how to figure out what that is that it often is just right there in front of you once you're used to it and so you do some more you clean house to use your term on that so one once through it maybe you'll kick the center out of it i was expect you would improve it more to do most likely yes well i think i mean uh, uh, realistic expectations are always good so 
You can't work for an hour and expect your back, you know, your backache that you've had for 20 years to disappear completely. Sometimes it happens if you like really kick the center out of it. But usually you do, you do need to make a little more, you know, do a little more work. And the, your negative core belief and how true that that feels tends to fluctuate a bit because there's other stuff that sort of uh, activates that whole negative uh, conclusion. But if you and I'm, I'm a big fan of daily work. Do it, you know, 15 minutes, 30 minutes a day. The way it's described in the ebook, and the way you can even dive deeper when you do the course. If you, if you chip away at this type of emotional baggage, you will get results. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Anything more you want to add, uh, Gabrielle? Uh, Gabriel? No, I think this pretty much covers back pain well okay oh, okay we're, we're gonna have a series have of these things and other topics at another time but until then tune in everybody we'll see you we'll see you we'll see you later okay mm -hmm.